Thank you for uh, letting us join you from Minnesota. And uh, like Andy said, we don't have anything growing here. We're working in uh, Grand Rapids, Minnesota and Becker, Minnesota mostly. Um, this is the fourth year of our breeding program. So we're up to uh, looking at the clones we started looking at four years ago. Uh, for yield for the first time, which is pretty exciting for us. So we're able to grow them at our trial location and we're able to grow them in um, multiple replicates. So up until this point, we've mainly looked at quality traits and skin color traits and specific gravity and that sort of thing. And um, now we're really getting a sense of yield, which uh, we're excited about. Um, we have about, uh, we have about 55 clones in our field year four. Um, we're also looking at our field year three in single replicate in the same uh, trial in Becker. And we've got about 154 clones there. We work in four market classes. We work with russets and chips and reds and to a lesser extent yellows. Um, and one of the things we're really trying to do is speed up the breeding process and so that we can respond more quickly to um, environmental changes uh, or to changes in what consumers are interested in. And um, one of the ways we can do this is with mathematical models and that's called genomic selection and we basically use um, genetic data and uh, data about traits that are important to us to build models so that we can just use genetic data to predict how individuals will do, especially as parents. Um, and we can shorten uh, the time between the first time we look at a clone and um, when it becomes apparent or when it gets released. And one of the ways we're doing that is we're working closely with the other breeding programs in the US. So um, we've exchanged our year four with Susie and with Dave Douches at Michigan State and with Jeff Endelman at University of Wisconsin. And the four of us are all growing out these mixed uh, field year three, field year four trials and we've all genotyped them and we're all collecting the same phenotype data. So not only will we get a sense of how the clones do in multiple environments early, um, earlier than we would in say the um, national trials usually, but also um, we're able to use each other's data then to build these models and speed up the process. And so this is the first year um, we've really got that working at scale. And so we're excited about that as well. Another thing we're doing with our field year four, which is uh, the first time we can do things because we have enough seed. So um, we have uh, them growing at a couple of different nitrogen rates and we are hoping to screen early for um, nitrogen use efficient varieties. So varieties that might require less nitrogen and um, my postdoc, Dr. Xiaoxi Meng, uh, is taking the lead on this project and next year we'll be um, flying them with drones in an attempt to figure out if we can determine nitrogen status and nitrogen efficiency from those drones. Um, we also have things all the way up the pipeline. We have about 26,000 single hills at Grand Rapids, again, in all four market classes. Um, that we will uh, look at this year. And we have about 400 uh, field year twos also at Grand Rapids. Um, other things we are working on and interested in, we're looking at um, how different uh, harvest times and mine kill dates and uh, how long we leave them in the ground afterwards affects dormancy 
and how that interacts with variety. And uh, my breeding specialist, Dr. Thomas Stefaniak, is taking the lead on that. And that is a collaboration with Dr. Minerva Dogramarsi, um, our new pathologist. And uh, we're looking at how timing of nitrogen application interacts with variety for some of our uh, later stage red, red uh, clones. Um, and that is also a thing Dr. Stefaniak is working on. Um, we are still uh, interested in developing diploid potatoes. We grew some out for the first time this year. And um, we grew them as transplants from tissue culture. So uh, they're not beautiful, but they're flowering and producing tubers. Um, so they look like potatoes. We're excited about that. Um, and uh, another thing we are working on is we have a bunch of legacy varieties left from Dr. Christian Thill, who was the previous breeder. And um, we, when I started in the program, uh, we had these varieties, but they'd been grown in the same field in Becker for five years in a row. So um, they had a pretty high disease load. And so we finally brought them all through antiviral tissue culture and were able to um, observe them in the field this year and get a sense of which ones are potential releases and which ones are um, promising varieties. We're particularly interested in a couple that we've heard um, from people at events like this that they really enjoyed eating. Uh, specifically, we've got a yellow 04844 and a purple 07112 um, that uh, we have heard are particularly uh, delicious and interesting um, potential specialty varieties. And we are working with an organic grower to do um, organic trials for those and also have a tasting event uh, to try to get um, some people interested in it around the Twin Cities. Uh, so um, because we have those we've heard about and also um, MN13142, which is a uh, really high dormancy, nice type B russet, um, that looked great for Susie last year, I think. Uh, we think that this material we have left over from Christian is probably really promising. We just haven't gotten a chance to look at it yet. So we're excited about doing that as well. Mm -hmm.